Hi guys, this um, article is in relation to the BP oil spill that happened in Mexico last year. And as you know, at the time there was quite a bit of uh, controversy. But since then, 10 people have actually died who were either working directly or indirectly with BP. It would be very interesting to hear your views and comments as regards to this. Whether you think it's purely coincidental or whether there's something more sinister behind all this. Also, I advise you to watch the video right through as there's a very important speech at the end uh, directly to major corporations and the government. So I thank you once again for watching my videos. If you did uh, like it, please give it a rating. Thanks once again. I hope you enjoy the video. Tucker Mendoza, April 2nd, 2011. Tucker Mendoza, Gulf Truth activist and was shot four times through his front door and his niece hit twice. Gregory Stone, February 17, 2011, died of an unknown illness. Stone was an off-quoted expert concerning the damage the leaked oil might cause to the coast. Anthony Nicholas Tremonti, January 26, 2011, Department of Marine Resource Officer from Ocean Springs arrested on child porn charge. Dr. Thomas B. Manton, during 19th, 2011. Dr. Thomas B. Manton, former President and CEO of the International Oil Spill Control Corporation, imprisonment and subsequent murdered whilst in jail. John P. Wheeler, December 31st, 2011. Sorry, 2010. John P. Wheeler, former Pentagon official and presidential aide and defence consultant expert on chemical and bi biological weapons, was beaten to death in an assault, but it was discovered in Wilmington landfill. James Patrick Black, November 23, 2010. James Patrick Black, an incident commander for BP's Gulf of Mexico oil spill response team, died Tuesday night near Destin, Florida, in a small plane crash. Chitra Trunum, November 15, 2010, USF Center for Biological Defense and Global Health and Infectious Disease Research, found dead in an apparent suicide from cyanide. Dr. Jeffrey Gardner, November 2010, was investigating unexplained bird deaths near Sarasota, suspected to have been impacted by the BP oil disaster. No one has heard or spoken with him since. Roger Gruters, October 6, 2010, was hit by a truck as he passed through Panama City, Florida had been knocked down and killed close to the end of a 3,200 mile Trans-American charity ride to raise awareness about the Gulf Coast oil disaster. Senator Ted Stevens, August 9th, 2010, was among nine people on board when in 1957 the Haviland DHC-3 Otter crashed into brush and rock covered mountain Monday afternoon about 70 miles north of the northwest Alaska. Stevens was a recipient of a whistleblower's communication relative to the BP oil disaster blower preventer and a conspiracy of secrecy to hide the facts from the public. The cause of the crash is still an open investigation by the NTSB. Matthew Simmons, August 13th, 2010. Simmons' body was found Sunday night in his hot tub. An autopsy by the state medical and examiner's officers concluded Monday that he died from accidental drowning with heart disease as a contributing factor. Scientist Joseph Morrissey, April 6, 2010, soil biologist and college professor, was fatally shot 
during what police say was a home invasion robbery. And the latest one on the list, George Thomas Wainwright, um, we can add to this eerie list, died on October 26 or the 23rd, 2011. BP ROV pilot George Wainwright was killed in the apparent freak shark attack off the coast of Australia. With some believe he was hiding out of fear for his life. Unconfirmed. I'd like to start off by saying thank you to all the brothers and sisters that have come here today representing this cause. I've been asked by Mr. Etok and the Tribal Council to speak to you and the members of the press about the injustice that's been brought against us by some government officials and big business. How many of you out there have heard of alternative engines? Engines that can run on anything from alcohol to garbage or water. Or carburetors that can get hundreds of miles to the gallon. Or electric or magnetic engines that can practically run forever. You don't know about them because if they were to come into use, they put the oil companies out of business. The concept of the internal combustion engine has been obsolete for over 50 years. But because of the oil cartels and corrupt government regulation, we and the rest of the world have been forced to use gasoline for over 100 years. Big business is primarily responsible for destroying the water we drink, the air we breathe, and the food we eat. They have no care for the world they destroy, only for the money they make in the process. How many oil spills can we endure? Millions and millions of gallons of oil are now destroying the ocean and the many forms of life it supports. Among these is plankton, which supplies 60 to 90 percent of the Earth's oxygen. It supports the entire marine ecosystem, which forms the basis of our planet's food supply. But the plankton is dying. I thought, well, let's go to some remote state or country, anywhere on Earth. But in doing a little research, I realized that these people broker toxic waste all over the world. They basically control the legislation, and in fact, they control the law. The law says no company can be fined over $25,000 a day. If a company is making $10 million a day by dumping lethal toxic waste into the ocean, it's only good business to continue doing this. They influence the media so that they can control our minds. They've made it a crime to speak out for ourselves, and if we do so, we're called conspiracy nuts and we're laughed at. We're angry because we're all being chemically and genetically damaged, and we don't even realize it. Unfortunately, this will affect our children. We go to work each day, and right under our noses, we see our car and the car in front of us spewing noxious and poisonous gases that are all accumulative poisons. These poisons kill us slowly, even when we see no effect. How many of us would have believed if we were told 20 years ago that on a certain day we wouldn't be able to see 50 feet in front of us? That we wouldn't be able to take a deep breath because the air would be a mass of poisonous gas? That we wouldn't be able to drink out of our faucets, that we'd have to buy water out of bottles? The most common and God-given rights have been taken away from us. Unfortunately, the reality of our lives is so grim nobody wants to hear it. Now I've been asked what we can do. I think we need a responsible body of people that can actually represent us rather than big business. This body of people must not allow the introduction of anything into our environment that is not absolutely biodegradable or able to be chemically neutralized upon production. And finally, as long as there's profit to be made from the polluting of our earth, companies and individuals will continue to do what they want. We have to force these companies to operate safely and responsibly with all our best interests in mind, so that when they don't, we can take back our resources and our hearts and our minds and do what's right.